Hello everyone, welcome to the Booster Shot. By means of this show, I, Ayush Gupta, cover for you on a daily basis the big picture debates of the Rajya Sabha TV, the Indian Express's explained section and the Science Monitor by Rajya Sabha TV. The entire purpose of this very show is to help you gain knowledge and perspective with respect to issues of national and international importance and to cut the clutter with respect to the enormous sources of current affairs that we cover on a daily basis. These three sources provide us with these issues of national importance and international importance in a succinct manner and in order to ace any examination, we are not just required to have information, but we should also have the capability to reproduce that information. And therefore, we have to curtail our sources, limit our knowledge and information and have the ability so as to reproduce it. The entire purpose of the show is this only. So today we are going to talk about the interfaith marriages and the recent laws which have been bought by various states to regulate them. I have picked up this topic from yesterday's section, explained section of the Indian Express, which talked about the Gujarat High Court stucking down certain provisions of the Freedom of Religion Act of the government of Gujarat. So, although we are not going to specifically talk about this law, we are going to cover the broad aspect with respect to the issue dealing with laws regulating interfaith marriages. So, I have framed a question with this, this respect. So, the question is, highlight the issues surrounding the recent laws passed by states regulating interfaith marriages, along with the judicial position with respect to them, and lastly, what could be the way forward. So, let's begin with our answer. So, first we will start with the central features of these acts. So, central features of laws framed recently to regulate interfaith marriages. So, there are basically three broad features. Number one, these laws require the parties to have the permission of the state prior to converting in order, converting their religion in order to marry an individual. So, first an individual, any interfaith couple who wants to marry, they, has to first, they have to first take approval of the state. And if they are not going to take this approval, there are going to be penal actions against them. So, various laws of Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Himachal Pradesh, Gujarat, they specify penal uh, provisions with respect to not obeying these directions. Then, these laws require you to give prior notice of conversion to the designated authority under the very act. So, if an individual is converting number one and then entering into an interfaith marriage basically if an individual belong to one religion uh, prior to the marriage and then he is converting so he has to first give take permission of the state in order to do so then that very individual is required to give a notice with respect to this conversion to the district magistrate as per the laws of up mp and hp so, this notice period is roughly between 30 to 60 days, basically. Then, lastly, with respect to the burden of proof, now this district magistrate is going to decide whether or not this conversion is right or not and whether or not this marriage can take place after this conversion. So, in this very scenario, the burden of proof is placed on the individual by these laws who is converting so as to prove that he is not solely converting for the purpose of marriage and he is doing so out of his own conscience then let us see what are the issues related with these laws first we have discussed the features of these laws so interfering with secularism the indian constitution not only calls upon the state to be secular in its actions but also guarantees freedom to practice profess religion of one's choice so basically article 25 to 29 jo ki hame freedom of religion deta hai so by making up laws to regulate uh, such things to see whether an individual and how an individual is trying to convert basically it is causing an interference in an individual's right to freedom of religion and this strikes at the core of secularism the ethos on which our constitution is based then against personal liberty article 21 
बेसिकली राइट देता है हम सभी को टू हैव फ्रीडम ऑफ चॉइस विद रिस्पेक्ट टू आर स्पाउस इन द सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजमेंट ऑफ केस पुट टू स्वामी वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया जो कि राइट टू प्रिवेसी की बात करता है इन राइट टू प्रिवेसी इट ऑल्सो ऑब्जर्व द राइट ऑफ चॉइस ऑफ अ फैमिली लाइफ इज ऑल्सो अ फंडामेंटल राइट देन रिवर्स बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ अब यूपी के एक्ट में क्या है बेसिकली यूपी के एक्ट में यह है दैट इफ देर हैज बीन एन इंटरफेथ मैरिज देन देल नॉट बी देल नॉट बी लिस्निंग टू द गर्ल बेसिकली इफ अ गर्ल हैज कन्वर्टेड टू अनादर रिलीजन एंड देन मैरिड एंड देन द बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ इज प्लेस्ड अपॉन ऑल द इंडिविजुअल्स हु पार्टिसिपेटेड इन दैट वेरी मैरिज और हु फैसिलिटेटेड दैट मैरिज सो हैज टू शो दैट दैट गर्ल डिड इट आउट ऑफ हर फ्री विथ and in order to prove that they are not going to listen to the testimony of the girl so this strikes uh, against the constitu- the common law principle of presumption of innocence basically is common law ke principle ke तहत ye mana jata hai that an individual is innocent till he is proved guilty and therefore first the other party has to prove the charge against the individual only and only then the individual will defend himself and aisa kara kyu jata hai this is also done so as to limit the use of law in order to harass the individual supposedly an individual comes to me and says that this individual has stolen my purse then if the burden of proof is cast upon me as to that i have to show them that i haven't taken it without that individual making any effort as to prove first his allegation then invariably there is going to be an harassment of me and in this very same situation there is going to be harassment of individuals who have actually facilitated that marriage and rightly who has done that marriage also then these laws are having patriarchal roots basically we have a legal right in this country that any individual any girl above 18 years of age and a guy above 21 years of age they can enter into a marriage these are major uh, individuals and they can enter into marriage with their own choice however by bringing in these laws like the up law in which the woman's testimony has no value at all it shows the patriarchal mindset in which girls are infantilized jisme kaha jata hai ki ye abhi to ye bachchi hai sirf and they are placed under paternal and community's control so that they can be the, all her decisions would be as per their guardians ab iske andar main aapko hadiya case ka example deta hu iske bare mein hum aaj aage bhi janenge jiske andar a girl converted to a muslim religion in order to marry so she was a major girl uske andar uske father ne ye argument diya honorable supreme court ke andar that this woman has said that i have to go to syria and main wahan pe jaake bakriyan chraungi she doesn't know anything and she still needs my guidance and therefore she should be under my care the honorable supreme court said nothing doing she is a major and it is her right even if she has to go to syria you know to uh, have a uh, goats graze around then she may do it the honorable supreme court noted that the government has various other laws in order to prevent any activity with respect to recruiting any individuals for sex trade or for uh, any illegal activities and therefore the need marriage need not to be regulated with respect to this thing and the women people cannot be snatched away with their right to have a spouse of their own choice after they have attained majority deep rooted prejudice this prejudice these laws which are today been brought out against interfaith marriages and for regulating intimate interfaith marriages are somewhat identical to intercaste marriages basically how much of a difference does it make at a time at earlier times there was a stigma attached to intercaste marriages even today in lots of parts uh, of the country there is stigma attached to it and there are various honor killings we can remember about 7 to 8 years when we were vilifying khap panchayats for hor- uh, honor killings so how different is the present situation with respect to that one so the sub committee iska example dekhiye the sub committee on fundamental rights jiske andar especially jo women members thi jaise ki rajkumari amrit kaur ji and hansa jeevraj mehta ji they had advocated the inclusion of interfaith marriages as a fundamental right 
Why did they advocate this thing? Because they said that there is a certain stigma attached to it and by making this a fundamental right, we will be removing all the impediments to this thing and lastly what will be the result that the stigma will fade away in some time. However, this wasn't done at that point in time. So, now let us see what is the position of the court with respect to interfaith marriages. Largely the courts have recognized the right of couples to enter into interfaith marriages. So you see, the Supreme Court has held that the state and the courts have no jurisdiction over adults absolute right to choose a life partner. Then the second point that we are going to just read is the point where the main contention lies. In Lily Thomas and Sarla Mukdal case, Supreme Court has said that religious convergence carried out without a bona fide belief and for the sole purpose of deriving legal benefits do not hold water. Ki agar aapne religious conversion kara hai sirf or sirf ek polygamous relation mein jane ke liye, then we are not going to uphold this religious conversion of yours. In Salamat Ansari, Priyanka case of Allahabad High Court, again, the High Court has said that right to choose a partner to live in or a partner of choice uh, for marriage is a citizen's fundamental right under right to life and liberty. Again, this very case that I had just mentioned about uh, earlier, the SCN Safin Jahan versus Ashokan M, also known as the Hadiya case, has upheld the right to marry a person of one's choice as a part of Article 21. A problem kaha lai karti hai. Although uh, Supreme Court ki and various other courts ki judgments say ye to clear ho jata hai that an individual has a right to enter into interfaith marriages. But ye clear clarity abhi puri tari kese nahi hai ki yadi kya vah individual apna religion change kar sakta hai for the purpose of marrying other individual. So yes. There is ambiguity still with respect to it and the matter is in subjudice with respect to these laws. Now, what is the way forward? Now, the way forward is, number one, there is need for uniformity. Alag-alag states apne alag-alag laws leke aari hai with respect to interfaith marriages. So, there is a need today that the central government should form a model law which should be applied to all the states. Lekin ab central, central government model law banai ghi kaise? Because ye ek law and order ka mudda hai and the state have this path. So, under article 18 of Universal Declaration of Human Rights, it mentions that everyone has the right to freedom of religion including changing faith. So, central government article 253 ke andar ek law leke aa sakti hai in order to implement this treaty saying that we are implementing this treaty that everyone has the right to change their faith in this very manner it can bring a model law with respect to it then states while enacting anti-conversion law should not put any vague or ambiguous provisions for the person who want to convert of his own will so basically states what are the states doing the states are embedding certain vague provisions as, so that the person has to show that he is doing it out of free will and putting like things like putting the burden of proof on the very individual so as to prove and other people so as to prove that this individual has not converted against his very will so we need to understand one another principle over here in criminal law what is of essence? In criminal law, the jurisprudence says that the law needs to be extremely clear because in, while putting an individual, while snatching an individual off his personal liberty, the individual should know it very clearly on what grounds it is being done. So, if vague are laws, then there is possibility of varied interpretations and it will also become difficult for an individual to defend himself and therefore the ambiguity and the vagueness with respect to the laws of the state should be removed lastly the anti-conversion laws also need to include a provision to mention the valid steps for conversion basically hum ye to bata rahe hain ki aapko conversion kis tarike se nahi karna however we are not discussing this in detail as to how you have to do the conversion secondly the lastly the main point over here is then why are not people going under just a second yes why are not people taking the resort of special marriage act so 
The issue over here is, Special Marriage Act has basically been formed for those people who are belonging to different communities and who want to marry. So under this very act, people can marry. However, in this very act, an individual has to give a 30-day notice and that too in a newspaper. And then anyone who has any objection with respect to this union, they can object and then the authority will decide whether that objection is valid or not. Now, those individuals who are today marrying, who are having interfaith marriages, they are wary of publicizing their decision. Mostly these decisions are against family's approval. And if they publicize this thing to the entire community, there is a possibility that there is a certain backlash against them. There was a recent wedding in Chandigarh with respect to this thing in which there was an interfaith marriage. Even the parents of the community, both the people were ready for, for that very marriage and they had organized a function. And what happened? Because they had to register their marriage under the Special Marriage Act because no one was basically converting to the other religion for the purpose of marriage. What happened? That they gave this advertisement as per the Special Marriage Act and then social pressure started mounting on them as to not have a ceremony with respect to it. And ultimately they had to cancel that very ceremony. So this is one of the reasons why people are not going into Special Marriage Act. And what they are resorting is people are simply changing their religion because once you have changed the religion, there is no requirement of such notice. So, now the entire issue is, can you change your religion with, for the purpose of just marriage? This raises question with respect to the centrality and the importance that an individual attaches to his uh, religion. So, over this, when we speak of Allahabad High Court, Allahabad High Court single bench earlier had said that this is nothing, uh, this is not right. However, a double bench, a division bench of the Allahabad High Court later on overturned those decisions and said that even if that the individual is converting for solely for the purpose of marriage, then also it's valid. However, this question is yet to be decided by the Supreme Court and a larger agreement has to come with respect to this very question. So, the entire debate goes around this very thing. So this is all with respect to interfaith marriages. I am also attaching a PDF of this very lecture along with the uh, YouTube video. Should you have any doubts, feel free to write down your doubts in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to reply to them. That will be all with respect to today. Thank you and have a nice day.